uh, it's with great pleasure that I kick off this panel today. Um, I'm joined by um, our awesome panelists, which let me just introduce you to them. Um, John, obviously, you'll be familiar with because he just spoke on the main stage. Thank you for joining us, um, John. And then I have another John, John Liss, who is um, up above me on my screen. Um, John, uh, you you uh, make, in fact, a uh, SCOM add-on yourself to pull the knowledge uh, from uh, what is in the management packs to add uh, enrich the spawn alerts and you've been around spawn for a very long time yourself um bob i don't know if you need an introduction or not um i, I yes. guess you, you see fair enough well um bob you've been around scum for a very long time as well um i guess attendees would have seen your session on upgrades earlier on today um bob uh works for top core and is, is, a, is an awesome scum expert uh, cameron um, hello, good to have you with us again. Uh, Cameron uh, led our keynote earlier on uh, on the future of SCOM, um, <laughs> along with jo uh, John. He's one of those who literally wrote the book on SCOM, uh, and you know you've been you've been with SCOM for the long haul of the journey. It's great to have you with us. Um, we're also joined by some attendees. Um, Anthony, hello, good to see you. And Martin, I know you work with uh, with Bob. Good to see you. Um, if you're watching this session and you'd like to join in the discussion, you are very welcome to. Um, we are going to discuss what the future of SCOM is. So big question, um, who wants to kick us off with their two cents on what it is? And if no one, I'll give you mine. <laughs> Go, Bob. You're the, <laughs> the most qualified here, I think. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, while talking about SCOM, so I'm not just only uh, future of monitoring, but let's just keep it at SCOM first. Um, well, one thing we do know is obviously there will be update rollups to the current versions. Uh, there is going to be a new version of SCOM coming up aligned with the Windows 2022 version. So it's probably going to be called SCOM 2022. Um, when it's exactly going to be released is not known yet. It's always going to be after the RTM of the Windows Server. The Windows Server is not that far off, but they still need to, you know, test everything uh, on the RTM bit. So it's going to take a bit, and it's also uh, probably going to align with the whole system center suite, so VMM, DPM, etc. So they will all be aligned. Um, so that's the next version coming up. It's going to be an LTSB, so it's five years support with five years extended support. So we are looking at 2032, probably. So that is the thing we do know. That's... So we can certainly say SCOM is not dead without any certainty. Yes. 2032, I don't know what I'll be doing then. Um, but there's uh, plenty, of, uh, plenty of years in between. Yes, and just because somebody is probably going to write the word Aquila in the, in the chat in a few seconds, um, we just cannot say anything about it, those who know about it. So uh, I'm really, really sorry, but just, just nothing we can, we are allowed to say about it. So. All, all hey, Bob, I have a question. I have a question, yeah. Bob. Uh, is is it is it? I know it's not an NDA thing, but is it official that it's going to be called um, System Center Operations Manager 2022? Because I, I I I hadn't heard them officially announce it. Is it official? Does anybody know? Kind. Kind of. Kind yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, I, if, if, if it's in the A, I don't know. Honestly, no, no, no. I, 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 it's I, a I, 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 that it's called SCOM 2022. I think it's official that 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 SCOM is going to be supported, but will it be sold by that name? And I, I haven't seen it. Well, honestly, I don't know. That, that's that's the name they've been just using until now. So, so for, to be, for us to be politically correct, we could say code name 2022. Co code name. Because it, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it could be like Windows, right? You know, it's Windows XP, Windows 95. Oh, yeah. now we're going to, you know, oh, 2F01 man. or something. Well, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I honestly have totally no information on this, but it's not it's not unprecedented that, that Microsoft at the last minute could exactly. package what code name, what has been called SCOM 22 as you know, Microsoft Monitoring Star 1.0, you know, you know, I, I'm leaving it open for them to change yeah. it at the last minute because I haven't seen them confirm the name. Yeah, they probably they will put brand. Azure in the name and then call it on-prem, like Azure, Azure <laughs> on-prem SCOM or something like that. But mm -hmm. just make sure that we know where it is, but they still get to add the word Azure to it. But, it uh, see, now, in, in, 
in the Azure Arc paradigm, that would uh, it, this is total this is fantasy speak right now. But SCOM is uh, Azure Azure Arc Azure Monitor is SCOM mm -hmm. in a possible future that would fit a framework. See, one sure. of the things sure. that's never made much sense to me is is why why there are two Microsoft monitoring technologies products you know um i like that vision of the future you know as you say it is crystal ball gazing but i, I think it makes a lot of sense to bring bring those things together and just to have a, a, a single uh, monitoring sort of um world from microsoft i think it makes a lot of sense it will in the end i guess is, is this all coming about because the uptake of the monitor outside of microsoft has not been what they thought it would be, i.e. people switching from SCOM to Azure Monitor purely because SCOM comes with all the management packs and all the preset stuff. Yes, there's some solutions that you can put into Azure Monitor, but in essence, it's a build from scratch. I'll let someone else take that, unless you want my thoughts. Well, what's what's happening as a phenomena is that, that you know, Azure Sentinel is having very rapid uptake uh, as, as Enterprise Sim. And Azure Sentinel uses Azure Monitor Agent, you know, on Windows and Linux servers. And so, um, without the without the uh, original intent of deploying Azure Monitor, you know, there's there's literally thousands of enterprises that have that have Azure Monitor deployed right now. They're just not using the Azure Mo Monitor features of Azure Log Analytics, yeah. but they've they've got a huge enterprise dependency on Azure Log Analytics. So it's a small step to add monitoring to the Log Analytics, lo Logic Apps, uh, Azure Automation, all of that infrastructure is already laid down by Azure Sentinel deployment. Right, because we're, we're finding that, you know, I'm, I'm using, we're sticking to SCOM um, for anything that's kind of real deep APM or metric related, we're pointing people to App Insights and we're actually onboarding Azure and Google-based apps into that as well. Um, so that's for your kind of third line teams to use, but anything other than that, we're, we're kind of using SCOM as a data source and plugging that into AWS, SolarWinds, Azure via the MPs to get the metrics, app services, SaaS, et cetera, out. And it just seems a more logical way to do it because of the time we've invested in SCOM anyway with the agents on the infrastructure. Um, obviously servicing all that through squared up dashboards, but um, it would certainly be a hell of a lot more work to try and put what's already in SCOM into Azure Monitor sort of standalone. Yeah, I, think until, I think until Azure Monitor actually supports that concept of a management pack, being able to do discoveries and, you know, find things in the environment and just automatically start monitoring them, um, Cameron used the analogy yesterday, you know, you're, you have your ser servers that are cattle, they're all, you know, you, you want a template to monitor all that stuff in, in your environment. Uh, until it gets there, I think a lot of people are going to continue with SCOM. I'm, we're in the same boat. We looked at yeah. Azure Monitor and we said, wow, we have to manually configure all this stuff. I mean, there, the, there's basics there. I mean, you get your CPU, memory, and yeah. and and yeah. disk. But anything outside of that, if, if you have custom applications that you're monitoring, uh, mm -hmm. it just isn't there yet. You'd have to, you know, invent the management pack form. And if you're talking, you know, if you have... ESX on Azure or ESX on AWS or you're, you're talking to AWS natively or you're talking to Azure natively it you know to build a build a management pack that looks at all the stuff that SCOM can do natively it's just not worth the effort I, in my opinion at this time because SCOM is able to do it so yeah. my hope hopefully down the road is yeah Azure monitor will continue to grow um, I think we're starting to see some of that initial framework we don't, haven't had any confirmation from microsoft themselves but i think we're seeing the that <clears throat> groundwork being laid uh, through sentinel through uh, the the arc stuff where we can deploy manage and really use that agent on the box to do mediation type stuff uh, but it it's just not there yet yeah so i agree i think most people are gonna we're, we're seeing gonna even with come around even with a massive push, obviously digital transformation and we're, we're moving everything to the cloud, we're still seeing a lot of applications, certainly within Arup, that because of the way they've been designed in-house and engineered, that 
kind of still sit on an old stack of a front end web server with a database at the back oh, end. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, if there's a VM going into Azure or AWS, why not put an agent on it? And then we can do the normal stuff and, and monitor the application mm -hmm. the way we would yep. with App Insight sat on top of it, doing any of the kind of metric stuff. And um, it just seems to be a, a simpler way of doing it. And it also then makes it easier to, to hit that single pane of glass that everyone's looking for for your instant management and problem management, which obviously using squared up with the APIs that can connect direct to LA and stuff as well. So, um, it's always the hunt for the single pane of glass, always that. that term. Yeah, well, this is observability is the new, I won't say it, but the W-A-N-K word, isn't it? The, the big kind <laughs> of the, 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 the catch all. And what we're trying to do with our, what I'm trying to do is, is turn SCOM into that data source with squared up and, and everything connected to it as the observability platform. So you get in mm -hmm. all the data that you want, but into that one, one area, because we've looked at others like logic monitor and all these big players. Um, and the cost is just, yeah, they'll connect to anything. Yeah. It's just a web hook or an API. So it doesn't care what's out there, but the cost to do that is just even per server, just to cover off what's already in SCOM is like 150 grand a year. And it's just mental just for base monitoring. You think, well, we've got all that anyway. And plus all the extras, it is, I can't, I mean, five years ago when I came to this company that I, everyone was like, ask oh, system centers dead, even our config manager guys, you know, and, and I was like, there's no way what people have invested in what I was doing at previous companies now here are going to just be in everything they've got with SCOM. And it's no surprise to me that it that it'll still be around for a long time, whether under Aquila it goes secret squirrel into and merges with Azure and Sentinel and becomes this one big kind of platform where you can use all of them together by just targeting. Because at the end of the day, the agent's the same agent and it's the MMA agent that's going out for LA and everything. So. Yeah, I think we're on that transition period of we have our old legacy apps, right? Everything that runs in IIS runs on a infrastructure as a service requires a core OS to run. Mm -hmm. And we're on the wave of Kubernetes and Docker and the, of those apps being, you know, hosted. And we don't really have to worry about the OS anymore. It's all done. Yeah you know, at the application layer, and we're in that weird transition state, right? Not all the apps are, are Docker ready, not our Kubernetes ready. They still require, you know, that thick SQL client, the, you know, the connections back to SQL server themselves. So, and we're in that transition period. I think we're riding that wave right now as, you know, more and more apps get updated to really just kind of the, you know, Docker run or Kubernetes run, and you have an entire stack in that application stood up. Yeah. Um, we still have the legacy stuff that, you know, the CRMs and the ERP systems that haven't made that transition yet. And monitoring's inside of that, right? So you always have monitoring, I think, kind of lags behind the OS updates and every uh, the applications that are out there. And as, you know, things march forward, monitoring just is playing catch up, right? They're always trying to get there. And the legacy stuff side of things, SCOM will support for many, many years because people just aren't going to get rid of their POS systems or no. their, you know, the ERPs that require that hardware and, and the, the architecture that it's currently on. Mm. But even being able to pull that data in through likes of the AWS and Azure management pack, I mean, we've, we've done it with AWS where we've got cyber and security areas that are completely zoned off so we couldn't get an agent on them even if we wanted to yet the ability to connect into that aws account and pull that at least availability data of those endpoints and certain base mm -hmm. metrics and alarms is just you know it's a kind of a no-brainer really to to use SCOM yeah to do and, that. and they're in in azure monitor specifically oh. there's nothing that represents an agent right there's uh you put an agent on on a system that that part of it but there is nothing as far as i've seen and i've dug a little bit right to be honest i haven't dug too much but there is no agentless monitoring from an os perspective that i can find is that a right statement for everybody because we looked at that and we went hmm of course granted this was maybe a year, year and a half ago that we looked at it. So it may exist today, um, but yeah, we just figured, well, Scrum is already doing it. We already have it deployed. It's mm -hmm. just gonna be, let's keep it around. 
Unless there are more comments than that. There are two things that we've we've mentioned and not sort of dug into, um, and that's cost and management packs. Let, let's go. Let's go to kind of cost first because we kind of danced around cost a little bit. And um, you know, Anthony, you mentioned essentially that um, SCOM is cheap to deploy. And John, in your slides um, in your previous session, you said Azure Monitor is cheap. Discuss. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, let's see. Okay, how, how's this? You know, um, uh, people uh, forget that SCOM has an ongoing cost. You know, they see they th they see SCOM. We bought SCOM. We're licensed for SCOMs. You know, but in fact, it's you know, it's just Azure is a cloudy service, so you're billed as you consume. And SCOM is more, you know, this the 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 payments in actuality they're amortized. There's a TCO. There's right. Yeah. So I, I don't think that the dis, the decision making is clouded by human judgment that we don't take it all in. That's just a that's perception. Yeah, and I mean, for, you know, for us, it's the, the SCOM is part of the EA, so you don't like you say you don't see the 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 cost of it. Um, Whereas things like AWS, you know, or, and Azure, they're all ingress and, and egress of the data, and you're charged for that. So certainly, with some of the amount of data that we send and logs and things, you know, it, it would just it, it pushes your your costings well up. Right, and I would also say that um, you're not just buying SCOM, right? So you're buying System Center. That's that's the license. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you would keep one of the other system center products uh, on prem let's say then you still need the full license so then you have paid for scom as well yeah, um, yeah, I think, we, yeah we use uh, config manager and in well into now we're moving to but you know um, i think and um some automation stuff as well with um hmm. orchestrator so it's it's, a, it's quite heavily used well certainly i mean config right. manager in tune is our core software deployment updates you know everything it's our core shop tool so i'd, I'd, I'd agree on that uh basically it, it, it's quite a bit quite a, a lot of bang for your bucks um but um and i think john it, it's not so much the manageability of the cost in uh, in azure as well as the predictability um so to speak the suits and ties want to know um what the cost is going to be uh for the next two years yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a tricky one that is, is well, I, yeah well i sum, i submit that the companies that are able to handle variable costs because they are delivered through a cloud service and they're accurate true consumption like companies that can that can like they're they're going to get it they have a competitive advantage over the stick in the mud companies that will not commit unless they can have a fixed budget so frankly let's see there's a where there's a solution for both yep. you know the, the risk the risk taker can can the innovator can go one way and you know they can both succeed probably it's a big world let me yeah, jump and ultimately you don't have to have one or the other do you you know you can you can have both i think for quite a few years to come uh, you should have both depending on what your what your environment is if you if you're fully in, uh, into cloud stuff uh, that's fine uh, mainly financial services uh, i know back here in the netherlands and, and in the eu um, do have some concerns in terms of privacy something to do with a certain regulation uh, that can be a serious pain in the rear end and in that case um, being able it, it, it's on one hand it's a cost and on the other hand, it is the um, ability to even move to the cloud. So for that, in, in, in that respect, I do expect there to be uh, a scum for, for quite a few years to come. Cameron. If I can throw in here for just a second. So what I wanted to say in sure. essence is I've been living and breathing in Azure now for four plus years. And what we basically found is once you hit stride with the type of stuff that you're doing, the cost becomes very stable. I know every month what my bill is going to be because uh, I've got a projection and history on it and what I've done and everything. Unless Microsoft goes in there and starts changing underlying costs on structure that I've been working with for years, I'm not concerned about the bill at all. I can I can hand that off to my company right now and say, what's my bill going to be for the next two years? This or less. Yeah, that's true for our, our entire, um, we run SCOM on it, but our whole engineering lab is, is uh, Azure VM backed and we know exactly what it's going to be every month. That's true. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just wanted to sort of bring up something you said earlier, John, on um, TCO. It's not just the cost of the the license. The license itself is the cost of you know operating the product. Um, and SCOM, you know, the fact that there is such a vast vendor ecosystem, the fact that companies like Cookdown exist, um, you know, it is complicated to get it to do what you want it to do. Um, you know, it's not just the cost of the license itself. You've got to get it, get it working and keep it working, um, which is the hidden cost. Uh, well, right. I mean, I would, I would say that, that, you know, when we talk about, um, I think I talked about this in my session is, and we've, we've hinted on in this group is that um, the SCOM is, is absolutely the solution for the, for the next 10 years, you know, for the deep uh, on-premise private cloud workflow processing that there's no, that's a safe bet, you know, but for, uh, a, a, I heard Dieter talk about this in his session, you know, if you're just using SCOM for lightweight monitoring, you know, uh, Azure Monitor can do the core up down very effectively. And a new a new element in this is that uh, which hasn't happened before is that you know again SCOM is growing at, or rather uh, Azure Sentinel is growing as a sim in market share very rapidly. And with uh, Azure Sentinel comes the infrastructure of Azure Monitor. And so for the first time in our industry, SCOM has never been commingled with uh, with uh, you know a, a sim. Right, but Azure monitors commingled with a popular sim, and so n now we talk about the cost of Azure Monitor being almost zero for a company that's deployed Azure Sentinel. And uh, when when we go in and present to large companies that are looking to replace um, a, a current sim solution with Azure Sentinel, and they look at the total bill, they look at Azure Defender, Azure Automation, you know, Log Analytics. Uh, uh, Sentinel processing itself, you know, when they look at all of it, they're like, their mouth drops open because it's still a fraction of what they're paying for their current legacy SIM provider. And so the fact that that Azure Monitor, honestly, we, we have to take a step back, you know, and SCOM is going to be really important, uh, as we said, for almost indefinitely for uh, for what it's great at. But the things that other that the cloud tools can do at the lower level more efficiently, it's it's going to trend there. So we're going to have both. We're going to have both ecosystems. I agree. It will be hybrid monitoring. So use those platforms which are better at something. You know, again, we, we've discussed this for years. ACS, I wouldn't do it in SCOM anymore. You know, you've got better platforms for it, like the ones you said already. Log analytics, put it in Sentinel, whatever, right? So that that is the, that is the direction for it. It's built for this. It's faster, it's more efficient, you can hunt, you can do all kinds of things. So use the best the best place to do some of these things and right. uh, and use hybrid monitoring wherever possible. Yeah. You know, assessments, right. Right. these right. are some things which are living in, you know, log analytics solutions. They are not living in SCOM. Yeah. So it, just no some one of these all. simple things. <laughs> Makes just total sense. Just to pick up something from the chat there, um, there's discussion going on around um, plans for supporting Kubernetes and Docker in SCOM. Um, I was wondering what the, not necessarily the direct answer to that question, but what the um, the panel's thoughts were on, on you know, monitoring Kubernetes and Docker and the right platform and approach to it. Ah. Well, I think I, I also put some answer already in there in the, in the chat. So for the Kubernetes stuff, it was, a little bit, you know, from the Microsoft side, um, two years ago, uh, it was more like, hey, let's build this out in the cloud and, you know, put everything in the cloud, put monitoring in the cloud. So we know the the nice uh, nice lady who was uh, building up the uh, the Azure Monitor, Keiko, and the Azure Monitor solutions for this for the monitoring. So there was a lot of effort being put in there. She actually and her team actually uh, made some pretty big strides forward further than uh, than others were doing in the, in the monitoring space there uh, on top of that platform. So it was all kept in the cloudy world. And now, yes, yeah, people are deploying Kubernetes also on-prem or with Docker, or maybe starting to move away from Docker, moving into Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, 
that in that direction, Scom is a little bit late to the party uh, if somebody still needs to make a management pack for it. Um, but I'm not sure if, if it's going to happen or when or if Microsoft is going to do it or the community, but it's probably not going to be the easiest one. And uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, John. That's uh, that's the other part. You know, if you can still connect your cloud monitoring to your on-prem site for AKS through Arc, then you know you can make use of uh, of whatever is there already. I mean, it it really the Azure monitor doesn't care if you are on-prem or not anymore, especially if you link it through Arc because it's all it's all ARM based. It's yep, true. John, the future is coming. <laughs> Um, next question from the chat then before we move elsewhere. Um, what do you think about monitoring Azure VMs with SCOM? Great. Yeah. You can. You certainly can. We, we do it. <laughs> That's we do the, it and, and I think the, the line in the sand there is what's the application you're monitoring, right? If it's mm. a, a herd of cattle type server, yeah, Azure Monitor can monitor your CPU, your disk, uh, your, you know, the performance of that workload that's on that VM. If it's a custom application, you know, you have a development team, you have uh, APM enabled for that those particular boxes and you really want the nitty gritty details or you have a very custom management pack that you've written that monitors your in-house applications. Um, yeah, SCOM is, in my opinion, still the way to go. Yeah, I mean, you could you could install uh, SQL or IIS on these machines. I know there are also solutions in it in the past SaaS uh, areas of, uh, of Azure, but they don't always um, connect to your application. For example, if you try it with SCOM, it simply won't work. So then you would still install a full VM even if it's in Azure. And then you still put the application on it, so you didn't, you need to monitor it. So yeah, that's uh, that, that's all the choice, like uh, like John says. If you just wanna put uh, some CPU monitoring memory disk, then yeah, just don't bother. Uh, but if you wanna go into the application monitoring site, or maybe you have connected applications between an on-prem backend and an on, uh, uh, on cloud uh, frontend, for example, which is, possible very likely and then you would uh, put scom agents on them but at some point you will move off of the full vm and move into pass and saas yeah and then you cannot use the agent anymore mm -hmm. cameron interested to discuss your point there mm -hmm. you need to dis uh, consider costs for data egress from the agents yeah because now you're pushing data back out from the cloud mm -hmm. back to on-prem mm -hmm. Makes we sense. actually find we actually find using SCOM wherever SCOM lives. SCOM can live in Azure. SCOM can live on prem, frankly. But using using SCOM to monitor in Azure VMs is more costly than you'd expect. There's more charges for egress, as as Cameron said. There's more. There's there's it's it's it works, but it's there's a little bit of friction and and there's a cost. The license portability to to do it legally, you know, the, the max. I think you know that when you convert your data center licenses. Uh, it actually Microsoft sort, of, sort of caps you at at uh, at the cost, and whereas on prem you can reduce the cost by increasing density. Mm -hmm. uh, not so, not so when you when you're using the because the only way to buy the license portability is on SA, and it's, it's rather inflexible. It's part of the friction that you add uh, when you use SCOM in on in Azure for mm -hmm. Azure Azure workloads. Makes sense. I wouldn't even have even considered the the licensing implications or the data in, ingress egress costs. So good. <laughs> well, that's, I'm not the one doing it. <laughs> Ultimately, so that's okay. Um, moving on to management packs, which is the other thing that we sort of scratched the surface of. There's definitely more there. Um, what do you guys think the role of management packs will play in a sort of Azure monitor world? Is there a role for management packs to play in that world? Um, I would hope they adopt the concept of a management pack, you know, being able to um, target a set of machines and say, you know, go find the IIS boxes. You know, if you have a regional site or a resource group that you, you know, have certain workloads in, go find all the IIS boxes and, and monitor them. Um, I, I would hope that they continue with that 
bringing that knowledge from each of those product teams into the monitoring solution, just like they did with SCOM. Um, you know, when they wrote when the when they wrote Exchange, they required the Exchange team to sit down and say, you know, what are all the counters we need to be looking at to make sure this application is healthy, and they made those management packs. Um, that that is the true value of SCOM right there in a nutshell. Uh, I hope they continue to bring those to the next flavors of Azure Monitor, and you can turn them on and say, you know, I have IIS in my environment. And it now goes and discovers IIS or Exchange or SQL or, you know, whatever your infrastructure as a service is running. Now on the on the software as a service side, um, hopefully they're building that into Azure Monitor. And because we can't see what's behind a software as a service SQL, right? We don't know what it's running on. We don't know the OS. We don't know the VM. We don't know the, the hypervisor. Um, you know, any of that stuff underneath, we're just consuming SQL. So hopefully they're in the back end monitoring that instance of SQL the correct way through Azure Monitor. And I, I, I hope and pray that they bring it to it. Um, I think that will either make or break Azure Monitor, in my opinion. Yeah, leaving some silence, just going reading the um, thread in the chat, basically. Interesting what you say, John, about uh, uh, what Azure, Zent Azure Sentinel has. We'd like to say that out loud. <laughs> Oh, the solution pack. Yeah, yeah. I, mm. I, 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 I uh, it really is that it's so new. I've hardly even had time to even think about it. This stuff moves so fast. But um, the Azure solution paradigm is, you know, uh, vendors or application groups can assemble uh, the three or four types of, uh, you know, people have, have mentioned on, even in this session, I think, you know, Azure Monitor, you're starting from scratch. You have so many, if you do every little thing. So they're mm -hmm. on the set, again, Sentinel and, and Monitor, the overlap is very significant. And so again, we're the, our monitoring uh, tips on how to do the monitoring. The, the security community is kind of leading with it. And so there, there. If you want it, you know, I have no official information whatsoever on solutions coming to the Azure Monitor side. It could be something that will always be a value add premium on Sentinel, but it, it's also highly possible that that it would come to the Azure Monitor side as well. So, uh, if if you want to see what will systems, I'm sorry, what will Azure Monitor do? to uh, have something like management packs, take a look at Azure Sentinel solutions is very, you know, and, and again, so, so new, I don't even know exactly how they work. I don't know if they're a single arm template or what they are, but the, it, it is it is a method to deploy a bunch of Azure artifacts all at once, just like just like a SCOM management pack. It deployed tasks and reports, you know, same, same paradigm. Makes sense. I think ultimately, I think there's anyone here that would disagree that you know the the notion of being able to extend Azure Monitor with something that's management pack like, call it what you want, is super important. And then obviously building out whatever is that is with those management packs, whether that's community, whether that's vendors, whether that's Microsoft, is so sort of important for the future. I'll, I'll actually debate on it, and the reason why I say that is because there, and, and it's interesting because I've been working in the automation space as well, and there's a definite parallel between the automation space and the monitoring space in terms of how they look at things, even down to the documentation teams. If you look at how they document, how do you decide what solution to use in automation? They work them on what you want to achieve. What is the goal, in essence, that you're aiming for? What is the particular workflow that you're trying to execute? The same thing really, and, and this, the doc team looks at it from the same way as well, and I think the tech teams do. They don't care about what tooling you use to do it, you know, whether that's SCOM, Azure Monitor, or something else, in essence. But what they care about is what is the end goal that you're attempting to achieve, and therefore, for that particular thing, what is the recommended uh, uh, tooling to be able to do so? So the recommended tooling right now might be um, might be SCOM for say synthetic transactions or something of that nature might not be in the future. Um, so all of that winding back up to say that, that I don't necessarily believe that we're going to get a management pack equivalent for, for Azure monitor. Cause that's the Pandora's box of the solutions like John's talking about, which are great. Those are read only. They're not doing any manipulation of the systems and they don't have the capability to reach back into those systems. They're doing data gathering from other sources, pulling it together and visualizing that data. That's great. And that's no risk, low risk type situation. But as soon as you add the capability to push out pretty much anything that you want to do, 
um, it starts raising alarm bells left, right, and sideways. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing anybody uh, or Microsoft cracking that at all, because I don't think they want to open that that box. Yes, because you open it up for tasks, but also for inserting any PowerShell you want, which mm -hmm. basically then makes it an, uh, a scheduler tool. Yep. You know, it will make it an orchestrator or SMA or whatever you want to call it, because that's what SCOM is also. You know, it's just a framework executing workflows. But if it's only reading stuff and gathering stuff and then manipulating the gathered data inside of the cloud, you know, so it's just gathering, pushing it out into the cloud, and then over there you are working with it. You're not working with it at all on the machine itself, on the yeah. agent. And the only exception on the Sentinel side, in essence, is things like logic app integrations where you have to define mm. if this incident occurs, I'm going to do this particular thing. Well, it's driven by the end user. They're taking responsibility for whatever mm -hmm. code is being pushed out there and the rest of it because they wrote it. You know, it's their problem. Right. So I think it's, it's different in that. It's a whole different paradigm. Yeah. Makes sense makes sense how long have we got we've got four minutes to go we'll do open a whole whole new um whole new can of worms let's do it yes um so uh, what okay so how does the future of monitoring applications um play into what the future of scom and microsoft monitoring in general is do you think i think it's very important because just on, on monitoring an operating system it's only a few counters, but if you want to know something about the application, then you have to go a little bit deeper. And uh, and then it starts depending on where are you running it. Are you running it on-prem? Are you running it in a full VM? Or are you running it in some SaaS or PaaS capacity where you cannot put an agent on it and you have to synthetically try and touch whatever is there through some kind of an interface? So that will be the difference. It's just my view. Anyone else? I thought there'd be more worms in that can. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, where to go next then? Hmm. I think um, as far as applications are concerned, um, you've got sort of where the application is stored and kind of the, the makeup of it. Obviously in the SCOM world, we're typically, because SCOM is, you know, architected around uh, infrastructure monitoring, you know, the makeup of an application is typically bits of traditional infrastructure, um, you know, and how they all sort of relate to each other. Whereas in the Azure monitor world, um, you can cater for cases where you'd need APM, um, you know, so um, custom built applications, how the various um, bespoke components um, connect together, um, you know, in how I've seen Azure monitor deployed and used versus SCOM, that's the difference. What do you guys think? Am I right or wrong? I agree with that. Uh, I think that, you know, if it's a herd of, herd of cattle type uh, server that you need to monitor, yeah, you, you, you know, you can use Azure Monitor and get the basic met metrics out of it. And if you're really just looking for up down state and you don't really care about giving detail back to a dev team, um, yeah, you could use Azure Monitor. Um, if you're looking for, you know, more granularity on trends and maybe, um, you know, you have to give that analytics to the de developers to really manage that stack from top to bottom because you own the the code, then yeah, SCOM is a, is a better solution. Makes sense. I, I yeah. I agree. So I think the last question we've got time for is um, one one from the chat. Um, what can be done to get the new IT specialists to gain foothold in working with SCOM? Microsoft has dropped the ball here, so SCOM is going to is going the same path as BlackBerry, DB2, or Sybase. How do you get started with SCOM if you're new to it? Stand up a test environment and start playing with it. I mean, that's probably the biggest, uh, since there are so many different things that you can do with SCOM, I think that, you know, set your objectives out first and foremost. What do you want to monitor and why? And then go after that. And along the way, 
you are going to hit Cameron's website, Bob's website, John's website. Um, you're going to start finding out things about how SCOM functions. It It is a, you know, in my opinion, it is a 600,000 foot wall to climb for knowledge. Uh, I don't think anybody will ever know everything there is to know about SCOM and what it's capable of. Um, but there are experts in various different areas, uh, APM side, you know, the Linux side, the, you know, how to do the security side there. There's a lot that is wrapped in that product and really just start playing with it. Um, you know, define your objectives. What do you want to monitor and why? Um, and then who your target audience is going to be. Right. So what application teams are you going to be delivering alerts to? Is it just your operations team that run the servers? Is it going to go to the development guys? Is it going to go to HR? Is it going to go to, you know, what what is your target audience? And that will help you define what you're going to be delivering to them and then start playing with it. Um, read, 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 read. Um, go through everybody's blogs. Uh, if you find an interesting topic, if you want to monitor a coffee pot monitor a coffee pot, you know, try and uh, try and play with the product. That's probably my biggest uh, um, recommendation. Now I learn by doing, so I'm always a, a guy that I will grab the bits, spin up a VM and blam, there we go. I usually don't read a stitch of documentation until I get stuck. Um, other people, I understand everybody learns differently. Uh, they like a formal training course. There are courses out there that you can do. You can take that is a, the formal uh, training for SCOM. Um, so whatever you, however you best learn, yeah, just dive right in, start using it. Bob, now's your time. <laughs> so that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. I have to draw it to a close there. Um, I'm going back to the main stage now uh, where we've got a quick break and then we'll go into the next session. Feel free to carry on discussions here. Um, this panel discussion won't suddenly disappear. I'm just I won't be here to chair it. So if there are questions and people want to hang around, they're welcome to. Um, otherwise, head back to the main stage for a quick break and then we'll go into the next session. Thank you very much, panel. Thank you very much, attendees. It's been a really good discussion. Thank you. Cool. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah, to reflect back into the discussion which was going on in the chat, you know, about learning. It's It's been something which was bugging me for years. And, you know, customers keep asking me, like, hey, can you give me a training? Often also directed directly at that customer location. You know, like, hey, how are we using uh, views, alerts? What's our process? So we can actually combine that, but we found that it's also important to give more generic operator trainings and to actually learn what it does. Because Microsoft used to have an admin training, which goes into everything and also sometimes into things that not everybody is using. For example, if you're just starting out with SCOM, then it's not the first thing you are going to do is spin up all the three APM bits around it. It's not likely going to be the first thing. Um, so yeah, we we kind of started uh, using uh, our uh, our own uh, courses and now adjusting them to make a certification around it as well. So just because nobody else is doing it, then we will do it. But also the especially the operator part is uh, yeah the the operator part is important because we we really saw questions around it, you know training people who are actually using SCOM as first line, second line, but also third line, not being SCOM admins. Because if they are looking at a screen and they are not using it, then it's only the SCOM admin looking at the SCOM screen. And that's that's the, the path to failure completely. Because then it will be just one guy looking at the monitoring. It'll just die. <laughs> I bet I'm not the only uh, one who's seen this. Happen. On the learning, on the learning track, I, you know, it, when they, when the question was asked, it got me thinking because I know that M Microsoft is leaning really forward with trying to make it super as easy as possible to to demonstrate uh, and trial their uh, cloud solutions. You know, yeah. the one click to deploy this giant sandbox. Uh, you know, it, they, there's many Microsoft advanced cloud offerings that have very advanced learning tracks yes. like that um, yes. and I, and then I, then right away i thought well gosh they're not doing that for scom well and they're then, not doing it for any on-prem 
Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen anything true. like that. There's a lot of stuff in GitHub for, you know, ARM templates and you spin up this firewall or you spin up this, you know, yeah. JDE environment or you set up, you know, whatever. And it's literally, right. you, you click on it, it takes you through the little yeah. wizard and you say, okay, go. I haven't seen anything for the system center suites, um, operations manager, yes. config manager, or any so of those. Can you still get, you can still get, can you still get like a 90 day uh, version, trial version of System Center, like down, download the ISO? I think you can still do yes. that. So uh, if you you can still get, so the, to the to the person who says, how do I learn System Center from scratch with nothing? You know, which is what Microsoft is making these sandboxes for. You know, they're taking you absolutely, here's what a log analytics agent is. They're taking you from the very beginning, you know, so like, for those people, yeah, download the ice, the Windows demo ISO and the System Center demo yeah. ISO. There's the and, and, there's the 2019 and, eval license right there. It's uh, 180 day. And so. and then then and then what? I guess that's the next thing. Do they? I guess all the stuff from five and seven years ago on how to deploy System Center it may still be there. The Channel Nine. I don't know. Most of I honestly it, have uh, well, there are, there are still bits and pieces there. Um, you know, yeah. a lot of so, the principles to, from or even from the old books still apply. It's just the new features which gets added, which yeah. are not in the old books, basically, right? So the red book or the mastering. Book. I didn't want to. I didn't want to plug this because it's one of them. The orange book is mine, but you know, Cameron, he was on here. His orange book is his too. But you know, those are still. We still get. We're still getting stuff from people. Are still sell, buying those books. Yes. You know, they're still in print. I'm right on. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> yeah, I guess it, you can say you can get the, the you can set up the demo environment for free as long as you have a, a server to, to spin the ISOs on, right? And the book, the book is $35, I think now. I don't know, from Kindle. And and there, that's how you can learn it. It's it's 1,900 pages or something. You know, and it's still valid. That's the amazing thing. You know, the, the, there's been more uh, whiz bang to it, but SCOM 2007, that product was a great design. It stood the test of time, you know, and so that's how, so I, that's that's how I learned it. I got inherited mom <laughs> and then was told by Microsoft. To yeah. Books. <clears throat> yeah, that, that, that idea of go of using, uh, certificate-based authentication the ability to add gateways you know that was uh yeah. that was the re big revolution between Mo mom 2000 and scum 2007. Yeah. AD yeah. integration as well but it's still there so that you know the health model that you know one point invented that in like the 90s if I'm not yeah, that that concept, yeah. that framework that has always uh, been true from what was it, 2005, seven, and forward. Um, I think they were messing with it in 2000, mom 2000, um, but it's always been the same concept going forward. So the the more latest releases, that concept of you know you install your management pack, you create an overridable management pack. And you put all your overrides in the in those for those specific classes. Um, all those best practices are. I mean, it works for the versions that are out there today. So 2019 and 2016 and uh, 108001 uh, or 18001. Um, yeah, it's it it's some of those best practices are are yeah. still there. But yeah, it's it's becoming harder and harder to find. Um, official training, I think, as Microsoft is starting to deprecate some of the mm -hmm. the knowledge that's out there. I've noticed over the last two years or so, I think I think they've started to really, you know, deprecate the 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 PowerShell parts of uh, of that uh, PowerShell technical library that they had out there, um, and they've totally transform their blog sites where they used to have all this information. And some of that just didn't come over. Um, the system center site does still have a blog, which is nice. That's where they do all the release 
channel stuff for the new management packs that are coming out usually end up in there. Um, sometimes they end up on the the specific team, like the, the sequel team may announce that they have a management pack on there. Uh, but I think for the most part, they put all, almost all that information in that, that blog. But yeah, it's, you know, if you can find formal training, um, I think I went through formal training way, way back. I think it was mom 2007 is what I actually had formal training on. It was a Microsoft sponsored, uh, Microsoft led mm -hmm. training course. Um, I, to be quite honest, I haven't looked at what training is available for SCOM in many, many years. Um, so, but it sounds like Bob's team is putting together some good packages, which is good, which yep. will, you know, for the, for the need to keep around those legacy monitoring, uh, needs, uh, you're still going to have to have some training. So that's good that, that Bob's team is doing that. Yeah. Because we, we also noticed, uh, when we asked around that even the, the existing training, which is not based upon 2019, but you know, based upon 16 at most, um, that, uh, the the training centers are not really willing to to give those trainings because they cannot either not find the trainer anymore or you know that that kind of stuff also happens so it's kind of moving off there there's of course not a certification uh, link to it from microsoft side actually that wasn't the case since 2007 that was the only exam leading to uh, to uh, some kind of a thing uh, so there was no certification it was just the training and uh, that's also why we are adding, you know, a certification badge to, uh, to this after a rigorous test, obviously. Uh, is, that, is that a Microsoft well, endorsed well, certificate then? No, of course not. Oh, okay. okay. It's the, so the, 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 new, the, the, the top core badge system, Bob. I'm fascinated. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So, I was just wondering if it was Microsoft endorsed or not. Did they have somebody come in and review your stuff and give you a thumbs up and you could be a, you know, train the trainer type of. Uh... No, no, it's uh, it's something we are we are doing on our own. So I actually was once uh, involved in the uh, in the previous version of the, the Microsoft training as a reviewer and uh, review editor. So uh, I kind of got to see, you know, that whole story, but it was all very directed, you know, so it needs to contain this, this, and this, and this. Yeah, but I don't agree with what is, what, mm. what is, what has to be there in modules. Yeah, yeah. We don't care. The modules which are there need to be good. <laughs> okay, but I want to talk about the modules. Nope. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, that, that kind of stuff. And uh, that's why we are doing it on our own. And uh, like I said, it's not, it's not endorsed by Microsoft, but, you know, we are the ones uh, who know uh, who knows com and we've been doing this for a while but internally in, at customer sites using their or organization their scom as a demo environment basically right going through their views and saying hey this is how you are doing it and this is how you can improve as well and now we actually included it in our health check our scom health check is more than just technical checks it's also process checks how are you using scom really uh, but also, is there anybody with training left? Like we saw a few few entries in the in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if if Blake uh, leaves his company, then uh, then there is nobody uh, left with uh, with scum knowledge. And I think there was somebody else as well who said, you know, it's just just the two of us. Um, you know, what's going to happen? Company on my own. You know what's going to happen with it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, Blake. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of companies are in that position um, just because there's, you know, it, it, it kind of, it surprises me, uh, at least the positions that I've been in, through, you know, I've walked in, they've had SCOM installed, uh, you know, and, and it's been running six months by itself and nobody's touched it. And they're mm -hmm. like, well, we don't, we don't know anything about it. It just does its thing. We assume it's on autopilot, you know, and, and you're like, okay. And uh, then you start digging, right? And, you know, in a prior life, we start digging and we had, I think we had close to, you know, 10,000 servers across the organization. And it was only installed on like 3K. We were missing, you know, over three quarters of the environment that wasn't even being monitored. And so, yeah, it's, 
It definitely needs care and feeding. You definitely need yeah. uh, just like a security guy, right? You need somebody at that post that has the ability to to understand and digest and what's going on with the system. You have Exchange admins, you have SQL admins, you have SharePoint admins, yeah. uh, you know, or engineers or whatever you want to call them. You have those roles that are out there. Uh, you need one for SCOM as well, you know, and System Center. Uh, you could, you know, you have your config manager guys too. And I I just don't, sometimes it's it's all based on the business priorities and sometimes monitoring is, you know, it's dead last in the list. And we all have to be advocates to bring that up, right? You know, because it's a vital part of being more proactive and doing our jobs a better way you know it's much better to say to your uh cto or your cio or you know any io that that calls down and says you know what's going on with this you know this server and you say oh yeah we're on it we already know about it it's it's much different story when you say yeah, okay, well, let me go look at it. I'm not sure what's going on. But if you already have a clue yeah. and, you know, you can say you know, we're, we're triaging and we think this this happened already, it's a much better feeling in the CTO, CIO's mind. I know at least when my guys report back to me, you know, that what's going on in the environment is always key and that perception of, you know, we're keeping the systems up and running is, is, is a good value. I, th I think that yeah, I got a book guys. I got to take it yeah. easy. Great Cheers, to John. see you. Great to see you. Bob. Hey, John. Yeah, John, Liss, I think from in my experience, it was that I think a lot of infrastructure teams end up because they're in charge of the Wintel platforms or whatever you want to call them end up putting SCOM in, uh, which is what happened to me. Um, I was an in infrastructure windows engineer whatever you want to call it and then kind of put my hand up with a bit of application support to to look at mom and when we kind of inherited it and, and emerged with telewest and, and ntl many moons ago and you kind of grow into that role so you end up doing it on your own mm -hmm. and i did it on my own at virgin for nigh on 13 years uh permanently on call hardly any holidays were on on call and there was no urge to replace it, but it was responsible for 89% of incident and problem management tickets raised across sure. the whole company. Sure. So, yeah. um, and it wasn't until I came to Arup that I kind of came into a system center team, but they were predominantly focused on config manager. So again, I kind of fell by the wayside and about 18 months ago, we actually set a proper monitoring and tooling team up here and, I wasn't hired to do it because I was kind of out somewhere else in the business and the guy found me and then we've actually ended up in a, it's just the first time in 20 years, maybe 20 years of doing this kind of role that I've actually got a, a monitoring consultant or whatever in my job title. And you know, recognized as actually doing that, but still I'm a single point of failure, which is mad. Yeah, I I always try to double, you know, at least have secondaries. Um, in some cases, we can have thirds uh, on technology stacks, and we kind of try to rotate uh, the engineers around. And so, you know, and we do that through on call schedule. So, you mm -hmm. know, you your one week you may be primary, second week you're secondary, and then somebody else is a primary, and so they get the exposure to that. And mm -hmm. I I really. You know, I hate to hear that there's one man shows that that are doing everything. Um, mm -hmm. You, in my opinion, how I've always handled that because I've been a one man show in the in my in my past is you really need to sit down either in your your formal review or you know just make a meeting and say let's talk about how this works mm -hmm. and let's how how do we get headcount how do we get you know somebody else on this team that that knows this stuff in case I get hit by a bus, you know, that, or I leave because I win the lottery, uh, you know, that the, the business will continue. My, yeah. my, my personal opinion, at least my approach to my job has always been, I'm going to try to write myself out of the job. I'm always going to supply, supply all the information I can to if I do walk out the door, 
the business can read, you know, the operations guides or the implementation or the enterprise architecture guides, they can see, you know, how this, the environment was set up and why the ops team has all the information they need to, to run yeah. that particular product. And, you know, at the end of the day, that is my job. My goal is to really make somebody else responsible for it. Now, being an architect, that's my role, right? I, I choose the product. I say, this is how we're going to implement it. And then here's all the ops guides to, for you guys to be successful. Here it is. It's yours. Go run with it. Right. Um, in a, if you're an infrastructure guy and you're a system admin or a windows admin or, you know, whatever that title is, and you're in charge of all those infrastructures and you're a one man show, I would totally have a conversation because uh, I was that in my past, you know, I, I, I came up through the ranks, help desk, to engineer, to, you know, architect is kind of how I went. Um, you sit down and have a, a conversation with your manager and say, how can we make, you know, me not be the primary uh, link of destruction for this company if I leave. So, and then you could talk about, you know, how they implement that. That's, you know, you do on-call schedules yeah. or you, you bounce from project to project or, or whatever. So I would yeah. totally recommend having that's that conversation with management. That's something that we've done or we're doing since I've come to this company is that it's, it's almost getting to the point where, I mean, I'm not on call here at the moment. So the, the platform I've built it, I mean, it hasn't had an issue in five years. So, it was built pretty good, but we're trying to evolve it so that I, I even step away from SCOM and then it's more of a consultancy role offering best practices on monitoring and tool choice. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. You know what I mean? And move, yep. or, or maybe for well, the next role, maybe might be into the architecture, the technical design authority teams that we have here where I'll be the advisor on it. So it's definitely where we're going. But um, currently, we don't actually have any on call for SCOM. There's no out of hours support for it. So because they said it wasn't needed as we followed the sun in a new model, which would have mean another one or another two of me, one in America's and one in East Asia. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. again, cost. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so, oh, cool. Good stuff. Awesome. I got to shoot guys. It's end of a working day for me. So family All things right. to do, but it's been awesome being able to talk to you guys and some of the people on here. So thanks. You're not going to shoot this combat, man, right? Hey, <laughs> well, you said you're going to shoot, but not sure if you were going to no, shoot. No, I'm the scum admin, so I'd be shooting myself, Bob. <laughs> Very good. Well, no, I'm go. <laughs> some Don't of do us that. Are, are, are at that point. <laughs> Don't do that. No, <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> I I knew this would trigger you, Blake. <laughs> or the pun with. <laughs> It did word trigger. <laughs> I think we've all oh, been in that boat. You know, you, you, something the business does that just makes you go, why, 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 why? Yeah, there's many, many times I wanted to shoot myself. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what happens when you use HP uh, management packs. It's, uh, yeah, I know, it's a side effect. Sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. HP management <laughs> packs are wonderful. They, uh, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, in the end, you get it working, but it's just, uh, it's just quite adventurous, and there's nothing wrong with an adventure every now and then. But um, usually, well, I like to choose whenever I go on adventure. Yeah, my experience with HP Management Pack, it really depends, you know, um, what uh, versions of of ILO and you know your BIOS and all that other stuff is installed, along with the HP utils that you've installed, oh, the agents that go on the box, and then the version of the management pack that you use with SCOM. Yeah, it's it's kind of a moving target of you know what's that 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 window of what works and doesn't work inside the management packs. But um, I, I think we, <laughs> for, from our perspective, we care about power supplies. We care about disks and rig controllers and fans. That's about it. Anything else that happens from that management pack, it's, uh, you know, automatically just, whoop, here's a help desk ticket, especially if it's critical. Yep. Exactly. Rasmus is making friends today. <laughs> So I think we have a couple more. Oh, it looks like there's 14. Is it? Four, am I reading that right? 14 people that are hanging out in the channel here with us. Anybody want to talk about anything? I mean, we pro we probably have 60 years worth of well, maybe even more experience between the three of us here. 
Like, yeah. Um, if anybody has, here, then uh, that adds another twenty. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> here's your opportunity to ask any question you want. If not, well, I'll jump over to the main stage and watch the rest of that. Also, any questions regarding badges, dogs, ice cream? Just, just ask them. I think Bob has a question for you, John, but he doesn't know it yet. What's that? Your background is mirrored. Bob stated earlier that, that day he couldn't mirror his background. Couldn't mirror the background? Uh, the thing um, is, if, if, I, if you look at yourself, then you see the logo, the Scomaton logo is mirrored. Oh, am I, is it backwards? Yeah. It is, yeah. Oh, for... But the thing is that on my screen, it's actually in my normal screen that it's actually the right way around. But it looks like this. Uh... So is that one better? Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't know if it was flipping it. Because when I'm looking at it on my screen in the session, it's backwards. But for you guys, yeah, it's. You see yourself mirrored, indeed. It's, it's the correct way around. Yep, yeah, that is correct. Okay, that's interesting. I, I didn't I don't think see so. the option for it. No, but there's actually a philosophy behind it because if you look at yourself and it is not not mirrored, then you get confused. But if you look at others and they're mirrored, then you get also confused. Yeah, 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 yeah that makes sense. This is now yeah. actually double mirrored because if I point to the right, then I see yep. myself pointing to the right hand side as well on the screen. I point that way. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I point that way, it, it's it's that pointing the right way. way so the yeah. Uh, so it is mirrored for me. I didn't I didn't realize they were doing that. I thought it was doing it by default, and I was coming out all backwards. But I flipped it around, and obviously I need to do it the other way around. Yeah. I I actually had an old streaming setup a long time ago, and I yanked out my green screen last night, and this is all running through OBS. So you can go download a virtual camera that allows uh, Hopin to connect to. And then OBS is taking the video from my camera, slapping the background on and taking out the, the green screen in the back and putting a, the Scomathon image and doing the, you know, the whole team's replacement of that in the background. But you gotta have that, you have to have a green screen to filter out that stuff bob you're using you said it was a uh, x split vcam that's yeah, what it was X-Split. which i don't know but, if yours looks better than mine it's hard to I, tell but i couldn't see the location where i can actually flip it at that moment so yeah i'll just leave it like this because bob still reads bob so yeah <laughs> yeah it looks be, fine to me look <laughs> would be okay enough yeah, and Rebecca, just uh, never worry, and you never sound off because you know everybody starts with something sometime. So uh, you know, we all started from scratch, just by learning, like John said, you know, spin up a VM or have a test system, play with it, watch for new features. There are lots of webinars around, which are free like these from today, they're also all recorded. We also have a page full of webinars. There's all kinds of stuff. And uh, and after that, you can also follow, uh, you know, trainings. Yep. Not, Don't be afraid not, to not, ask not, any questions. Um, when it comes to technology, I, I, I'm a yeah. firm believer, nobody's an expert on everything. Um, yeah. While I may have super depth in a lot of products, um, I know SQL Server Exchange, uh, pretty much all the Microsoft stack. I've been doing it for 30 years, but I don't know everything. I, and 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 just acknowledging that you don't know everything and you have to ask questions, uh, there is no stupid questions. There really isn't. I mean, there's stuff that Bob's going to ask me or I'm going to ask Bob because we just simply can't be exposed to all of it all the time. So, yeah, yeah just yeah. dive right in and... If you find questions along the way, um, if you can find a mentor, you know, any one of us would be more than happy to answer answer any questions. So, yeah, I mean, you know, let's say uh, for myself, um, John Cameron, Blake, who also uh, used to be an MVP uh, back in the day, you know, we don't get to be that way without sharing 
sharing knowledge, sharing content, speaking, writing books or whatever. Um, and that's largely for free, right? So that's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's fun to be in the community and to do these kind of events and just share together and work together on, uh, on moving forward. Yeah, Rasmus and Blake. Um, I think a good SCOM admin does know lots of different um, technologies, at least from how that product operates, you know, knowing how Exchange operates within its core, how SQL operates within its core. Um, I have become a better SCOM admin by really going to, I mean, Brent Ozard had a, had a, a SQL Server training and he dove into all the nitty gritty details of how SQL writes to disk and how it uses memory and how it does all its page filing and, and caching and that type of data, you know, you can't do unless you have some sort of deep dive uh, training and then you get, you get why Microsoft is saying page life expectancy is low. You get that because you understand mm -hmm. what the uh, what the application is doing in itself. So I think you know we all start out as you know a new admins, and you know like I said, I started on a help desk, and I worked mm -hmm. on my help desk, and my manager came to me one day and said, you know, these people need a, a new we have new salespeople coming on board. Can you set up a, a computer for them? And boom, I became the IT guy. Uh, mm -hmm. And then from there, I, you know, gone, gone into the admin role and then engineering role. And now I'm an architect. So it's it's a progression over time. I think it's not something that you just flip the light switch on and you're an instant SCOM, you know, guru and know everything. I think even the gurus don't know everything, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to very out lying cases that you know let's go monitor docker oh, well it's never been done before um yeah. but do we have the knowledge to figure it out yep do we have the time to figure it out probably not <laughs> exactly but, I mean, yeah that, that's the whole thing right so you can yep. there's there's always a way to do it and, and to find out but sometimes you just don't get the time and you know you can do things as a hobby project like me just working now on the on the U bridge uh, monitoring pack or, uh, you know, in the past, the coffee pot. But, you know, yeah, yeah. for other things, you need to be at a customer location. And sometimes you say, well, we only want the basics. We don't want to go deep because we don't want to spend the time and the money. And, well, all very good. You know, that's that's fair fair enough because we are external consultants. So, you know, we cost money. So it's all fair enough. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a way to get forward. And I think to answer like what Rasmus was saying, and Blake already answered, uh, as a SCOM admin, you kind of touch a lot of items in your environment. First of all, SCOM runs on Windows, IIS, SQL, you know, all those kind of things. So for troubleshooting yourself, basically, you already need it. Um, but you're also touching all of these machines in your network, and there are a lot of applications running on it. And let's say the base applications, you will get to learn also by looking at the alerts coming from it, by tuning the management packs, by watching, you know, what, what kind of performance counters are coming in and why would they be interesting. And uh, also by discussing with the teams. So you will go talk to the exchange team or the SQL team to the DBAs and say, you know what, we want to tune this, we see in this, why would this be interesting? And if they their only answer is, and I've heard this, um, I don't actually know what all of this means. You know, I don't know what page life expectancy is. All right. So if you are a DBA and you don't know what, what that means, then I think that's another problem and not, uh, not just turning everything off. That's not going to be the solution. So then you've got to investigate a little bit and then go into that discussion with them. And, uh, and that way you learn more and more, actually. Yeah, and and it, and when those alerts do come out, like missing page life, try to understand what the alert is, right? Check out the knowledge base article that's attached, um, and then do some Google searches and, and increase your knowledge. You know, one alert at a time. Um, that's really how a lot of my expertise came along, and especially the page life one is a perfect example of that. We had a couple servers that were uh, dumping page life expectancy errors. 
And of course we tried tuning them and we'd get talked to the DBAs and they were like, well, we're not really sure what, what's happening. And I had met Brett Ozart um, a couple months prior to that at, at uh, I think it was Ignite or uh, it was one of those events. And I said, well, why don't we give him a call? Because he seems to be, you know, the super expert, he's going to come in and save the day. And sure enough, he came in, SP Blitz, blah, 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 tis, well, right there is your problem. And, you know, he instantly changed that SQL server from being a dog and just falling on its face to, you know, and it all started with the alert. And I learned so much from that. And then we went to, I went with the DBAs to the, his training classes on that deep, you know, core dive of how SQL works. So take the opportunities and, you know, always, always, always request training, especially if you don't know a product like Exchange or SQL or IIS or even Windows itself. I mean, uh, there's a ton of performance counters that are in, in Windows that, you know, as a core admin or a good engineer, you should know off the top of your head. You should know, you know, your latencies for disks, your disk queue links. Um, you know, there's a ton of different things that you should be able to walk into a situation and really start discovering, you know, what's going on. Scomp gives you all that information, but you have to understand what those counters mean and what those what, what those alerts are. So, yes, exactly. So I know that was a big, long-winded... It's Big long-winded answer, to, uh, but go ahead, Bob. It's very interesting to learn more. And uh, also, if you go to different customers, if you're lucky enough to be a consultant, I would say, then, uh, yeah, you get to see different implementations as well of everything. So it's it's really, really helpful to learn more about, uh, about these things and learn a little bit of everything. You know, like I know a lot about Hyper-V, but uh, I know a little about uh, VMware. I haven't been trained in it. But I've been monitoring VMware since I don't know 2007, something like that, with uh, with things like NWorks, the VM manager packs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then yeah, you you get to learn how how things work, and you get to learn the 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 theories. You don't need to manage it or or work with it, but uh, well, you kind of learn enough uh, from it. And, and you'll if find you help that. Them forward, and you'll find that similar technologies like hypervisors are a perfect example. Um, a lot of the same kind of methodologies still apply. I mean, you still have disk IO, you still have memory, you still have, you know, uh, the concept of CPU stealing or, you know, ready time or whatever you want to call the, those matrices each, you know, if you look at each hypervisor, there's, their own little nuance of what they call that. And it kind of starts to apply across the board. And then you kind of go, well, all these are really doing the same thing. It's just, they're just calling it something different. Right. And how they're set up, there's the, you know, it's, it's like coding. If you've ever coded in VBS and then you go to, you know, PowerShell, the same functions still exist to do things. They're just maybe called a little different or they're, they're used a little bit differently. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's very helpful. We all came, uh, we all came from nothing. So yep. I was all... actually a fisheries biologist, so I knew more about fish than computers. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and then something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Ended up in the in the IT. So that's just just a thing. All right. So I think. I don't see any more new questions coming in. So I think we might as well wrap things up for now. 